Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. In this video, we'll be updating our top five best GPU picks. And really, there's no better time to update this series with the recent arrival of NVIDIA's Super Range and AMD's Navi GPUs. As usual, we have five categories covering numerous price ranges, and that means there should be something for everyone. So let's get into the picks. As usual, I'll start from the bottom and then work my way up to the, the big boys that'll cost you an arm and a leg. Now, for this update, I've ditched the Radeon RX 560 in favor of the RX 570. There's very little difference in price now, especially now that the 570 is down around $130 US. Back when I reviewed the GTX 1660 for the first time, I went and updated all my RX 570 results. And at the time, they were typically selling for about $140 US. And this made the Radeon GPU 13% cheaper per frame than the 1660 and 28% cheaper than the three gigabyte GTX 1060. Now with a further $10 off, there's simply no better option in this price range. That said, I should just note if you have access to a healthy used parts market, it is possible to get an RX 570 for as little as $50 US. Though looking over at completed listings on ebay.com, you should expect to pay more realistically around $70 to $80. And that's still a very reasonable discount and it probably warrants taking the secondhand gamble. The NVIDIA alternative here is the GTX 1650, but those start currently at about $150 US, and in my opinion, they are inferior performers. Unless you're restricted to a low profile form factor, then the 1650 still makes no sense, again in my opinion. And even then, you can really expect to pay quite a significant premium for an LP GTX 1650, and that's assuming you can find one. When I had a look online, they were all unavailable. I think there's only about two models at this point in time. So the Radeon RX 570 is the obvious choice here. All right, so if you can stretch your budget by about another 50 to $100 US, then that will open you up to the Radeon RX 580 eight gigabyte, RX 590, and the GeForce GTX 1660. Initially, I had thought the 1660 would be the go-to option at this price range. They typically cost about $230 for sort of an entry-level dual fan model. But then I noticed you can get quality Radeon RX 590 models for just $200. And such models include the Sapphire Pulse, Gigabyte Gaming, and Power Color Red Dragon. There's also multiple RX 580 8GB models selling for $180 US. So this means while the RX 590 is 7% cheaper per frame when compared to the GTX 1660, the 580 is 10% cheaper. So if you're really looking at maximum value there, then maybe the 580 will be a better pick than the 590. It is really tight here, and I don't think there's any, I don't think there's a wrong option really between the three GPUs that we spoke of, the 1660, the 580, and the 590. Really, any one of those three uh, GPUs will serve you well. But for me, I personally can't ignore the value of the 580 and the 590. I'd get the RX 590. As I said, there are some really nice models available for $200, and you get the slightly improved manufacturing process when compared to the 580. Of course, pricing in your region uh, may vary. The GTX 1660 may be priced closer to the 590, may even be priced better. So if that is the case, well, then the GTX 1660 would be the better choice. So be aware of that. Obviously, check the pricing, or check pricing rather, of all three models in your region so you can better evaluate your options. Okay, so the $300 to $600 price range. I feel this one is pretty well locked down by AMD at this point with their Radeon RX 5700 and 5700 XT. At least that is my opinion. I have just completed a 37 game head to head benchmark uh, between the 5700 XT and 2070 Super. So we have a pretty good idea of how those two GPUs compare. For those of you who haven't seen that video, uh, in short, the 5700 XT is $100 cheaper and compared across a massive range of games, it was just 6% slower on average at 1440p. And that meant it was 14% cheaper per frame in our cost per frame analysis. 
Still, one of the reasons why you may consider the RTX 2070 Super would be for 4K gaming. Even there, the 5700 XT still offered more value, but it was 9% slower. And, you know, it is better value because it costs 20% less, but at 4K, it's you're probably weighting more towards outright performance than value. But anyway, that'll be something for you to decide. The 5700 XT definitely eliminates the RTX 2060 Super. It offers more performance at the same price. And then we have the vanilla 5700, which offers 2060 uh, Super performance for around $50 less. So that one's pretty cut and dry, I think, if you're after a card in that price range, the 5700 series uh, is the way to go. Well, this one's pretty easy. If you have around $700 to spend on a new graphics card, firstly, congratulations, but your options are pretty well limited to the GeForce RTX 2080 Super. Uh, it's without question the best graphics card at that price range, and short of a few other NVIDIA options, it really is the only option. Annoyingly though, it is meant to have a $700 US MSRP, but none of the AIB models are available for that price. There are a few that are close, like $720, but most are $740 or more. That said, it is just the AIB models. You can purchase the 2080 Super Founders Edition model directly from NVIDIA for $700 US, and you get a free copy of Control and Wolfenstein Youngblood. So yeah, that's a pretty good deal. The FE model works quite well, or at least well enough. Something else to be aware of, as I said, there's really only NVIDIA alternatives in this price range, but something to be aware of are the standard RTX 2080 models. I've seen them selling brand new for as little as $630 US, and that makes them even better value than the new uh, Super versions. The 2080 Super, for example, it's only around 6% faster on average, so it's certainly not worth paying a big premium for. Anyway, with no competition from AMD here, it's all NVIDIA. Then for those of you with really deep pockets, all options are once again NVIDIA and the best option or the best choice for gamers is of course the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. It's an absolute beast of a GPU. It offers around 20% more performance than the RTX 2080 Super, though it does also cost around 40% more as well. So be aware of that. Still, if you're after a no compromise type solution for the ultimate 4K gaming experience, then yeah, get ready to part with at least $1,000 US, probably more like $1,200 US to be honest, if you want one of the fancy versions such as the Gigabyte Aorus Extreme, MSI Gaming X Trio, or the ASUS ROG Strix, for example. Personally though, because I'm a little bit tight, I would just turn down a few quality settings and get an RTX 2080 Super. But that would be a compromise, and if you're not up for those, then be prepared to pay a serious GeForce tax. So there's my five picks as of September 2019. The last update in this series was March, so March 2019. And back then, NVIDIA won three of the five categories. But now it seems six months later, it's AMD who claims the majority share of the wins. NVIDIA is still competitive with their GTX 1660, and the 2070 Super, it still has some merit but ultimately I think AMD's got them at these price points. Where AMD still falls short, or rather doesn't even show up to fight, is at the $700 plus price ranges. Here the 2080 Super and 2080 Ti are the obvious choices. Hopefully we will see the RX 5800 and 5900 series soon. Not sure about that, but until we do, you will be forced to buy a GeForce GPU at a rather hefty price premium. And that is going to do it for this one. I'm very interested to hear from you guys as always. So if you have a difference of opinion, feel free to uh, drop your rebuttal down in the comment section below and I'll be sure to address it. If you agreed, well, I suppose that's, that's pretty easy. Uh, if you liked the video, hit the like button. You can subscribe for more content. And if you want to get more involved with the channel, chat with us on Discord, watch our monthly live streams and interact with us there, then you can subscribe to our Patreon account. It's as little as one or $2 a month, depending on what tier you want to support or sign up for. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.